if they included a wider variety of people on their staff and who were involved in that process. So if that means um, you know, recruiting outside of the male dominated, female white dominated, you know, area and getting some more diverse people in there to make help make those decisions, help write those policies, I think it would help. When you're hiring, I would recommend that it's not a plaster over a situation because a lot of people can see straight through that now. For me, it needs to rep if you appreciate diversity, it needs to be authentic and sincere and something that's completely sustainable right throughout the organisation. So it's not just a, a recruitment process, but it's how you embed those values within the organisation all the way through. Um, they said all of the things they needed to say on their website about equal opportunities, etc, etc. But then when I went for the interview, really small thing, but when I went for the interview offered me ham sandwiches for lunch. Like, it's a small thing, but it, it represents a much bigger thing around understanding and nurturing and, and making someone feel comfortable. So, um, can you give me an example when? So there's competency-based questions, they're really, really difficult. So for a lot of self-disabled people, due to barriers outside of your role, you know, they might not have the same level of experience in the workplace as your other candidates that are going for that role have. That doesn't mean that they're not good at the job, it just means that you have to give them other opportunities to show. So by asking somebody, can you give me an example when you have um, um, had a difficult client, somebody might not be able to give you an example. There is a difficult, even if you don't have a disability, but if you have a learning disability on top of that, it's really, really almost impossible to think on your feet.